Hi, I'm Ray Rogers from the Robinson Research Institute at the University of Adelaide. And I'm Katja Humic, and we will discuss a new model on the formation of the ovary. It is well known that the ovary arises from the gonadal ridge which develops on the surface of the mesonephros. The mesonephros is a failed kidney which subsequently regresses but contributes ducts to the reproductive organs, particularly in the male. The origin of germ cells is well known. They arise in the yolk sac and migrate as primordial germ cells through the wall of the developing gut, through the dorsal mesentery, and then laterally to the gonadal ridges and into the obiduous cords. There they replicate as orgonia and eventually enter meiosis and develop into oocytes. But the origin of the granulosa cells is less clear. Initially, it was considered that granulosa cells were derived from the Reti ovarii, which are derived from the epithelial cells of the nephrons in the mesonephros. Later, it was considered that surface epithelial cells would penetrate the ovary and associate with germ cells to form ovigerous cords. These, in turn, would break down to smaller clusters of cells, giving rise to foliages in which the granulosa cells were derived from the surface of the ovary. We have published a different model of ovarian development using the cow ovary, which is structurally very similar to the human ovary. The experimental data can be found in this publication, which is freely available. We will present the new model on formation of the ovary and origins of granulosa cells. We will also present evidence that the development of the ovarian surface epithelium is more complex than originally thought. We will illustrate this development by way of a cartoon. Let us begin with the mesonephros. It is covered by an epithelium in yellow, with a subepithelial basal lamina shown in brown, separating the epithelial layer from the stroma, shown here in green. Some of the mesonephric surface cells in the location of the future gonadal ridge change their phenotype into what we call gonadal ridge epithelial-like cells or grell cells. These cells start to proliferate, thus forming the gonadal ridge and the primordial ovary. The grell cells continue to proliferate and primordial germ cells originating from the yolk sac migrate into the developing ovary and replicate as orgonia between the proliferating krell cells. At this stage you will note there is not a proper surface epithelium on the ovary except at its base. This basal area is really mesonephros and it has a proper surface epithelium with a subepithelial basal lamina separating the epithelium from underlying stroma. The remainder of the ovary is composed of germ cells and krell cells, with no defined surface epithelium at this stage. Stroma from the mesonephros then penetrates and expands into the primordial ovary. At the leading edge of the stroma is a basal lamina shown in brown. In the stroma are fibroblasts and capillaries, and on the other side of bas the basal lamina are germ cells and the only somatic cell type, the grell cells. Note that as the stroma penetrates, it branches, creating areas of stroma alternating with grell and germ cells. So in effect, it's this action that creates the ovigerous cords. And again, note that the surface is not covered by a surface epithelium at this time. Stroma tissue continues to penetrate to below the ovarian surface and it starts to spread laterally. This results in krell cells on the surface being underlaid by basal lamina at their interface with the stromal compartment. Occasionally, germ cells also become trapped on the surface by this process. It's about at this stage that the krell cells on the surface begin the transformation into an epithelium. Eventually the stroma completely separates the grell cells on the surface from the underlying ovigerous cords and the cords then become closed whereas previously they were open to the surface. At the medullary end of the cords the stroma appears to penetrate into the cords breaking in them into smaller groups of cells 
again composed of Grell cells and germ cells, with a basal lamina at the interface with the stroma. The auricular cords continue to break down into smaller cords, and the first primordial folicles, containing an oocyte and precranulosa cells, are formed in the inner cortex medulla region, surrounded by basal lamina. This basal lamina is now referred to as the follicular basal lamina. At the final stage, the ovidrous cords have been partitioned into primordial follicles, and follicular genesis commences. It commences first at the medullary end of the ovidrous cords, where they first came into contact with stroma and where follicles were first formed. The ovarian surface is now fully covered by a surface epithelium, which was initially multi-layered but is now mostly single-layered. It has a sub-epithelial basal lamina separating the epithelium from underlying stroma. The stroma below the surface expands and develops into the tunica albuginea, densely packed with collagen fibers. In summary, the Krell cells on the surface have given rise to the ovarian surface epithelium, except at the base of the ovary where there always was an epithelium. And Krell cells that were packaged with oocytes into folicles have given rise to the granulosa cells. So to be able to conclude that Grell cells give rise to surface epithelium and to granulosa cells, there is one underlying assumption, namely that the stromal cells always remain on the stromal side of the basal lamina and do not cross it. This is not an unreasonable assumption. You will also note how important the penetrating stroma is to the whole process of ovary formation, including the formation of the ovidrous cords, the surface epithelium, follicles and the tunica albuginea. Thank you for listening and we would like to acknowledge the following.